hush and the silence, or the, the, the talk and the chatter, and um, it's brilliant. Listen, folks, it's really lovely to be here. I'm going to keep the formal welcome until after we, we sing a few items of praise, but we're going to learn a song together. I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone here and, and teach a new song. Um, a song that inspired this, this event. Uh, and can I just thank you for coming, first of all, um, out tonight. Um, the song is called Precious Love. Uh, if I'm being honest, that's where the name for the whole night came from. Um, this is a song that the Gettys and Chris Tomlin done. Now, we will sing this. It'll be the last. We're singing a block of two songs at the end. This will be one of those songs. It's a fantastic song about Easter and about Jesus, what he has done for us. Um, and there's a really lovely chorus in it. Um, it's quite an old time feel to the chorus too as well. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna push myself here out of my comfort zone. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna sing a verse on the guitar and then we'll sing it together as a congregation so that you can get the feel for it. And then we'll move into the chorus and then the congregation will sing along with me in the chorus. And there's a wee high bit in it, which we'll do as well, so that we can sort of push our vocal cords a wee bit just to get that, because it's quite an important bit on it. Um, and then there's a wee bridge, but we'll see where we go at that stage. We might just all do it together at that stage, and you can follow along. So, intro kind of goes like this on it. Um, Simple. There is forgiveness flowing down from where the Savior died. The Son of Man upon the tree, exchanging death for life. That's it. I think we can sing that together. Let, let's do that. I'll go from the start again, then everybody come in. There is forgiveness flowing down from where the Savior died. The Son of Man upon the tree, exchanging death for life. Well, we go in places if we keep going like this. Yeah, that's great. Then the chorus goes like this. Oh, the precious love of Jesus. Oh, the fount of grace divine, flowing as a mighty river, washing sinners in its tide. There will never be another in whose name we are redeemed. Oh, the precious love of Jesus, for all sang that. And all the precious love of Jesus, oh the fount of grace divine, flowing as a mighty river, washing sinners in its tide. There will never be another in whose lovely. I'm going to do first four. This is a high bit and then we're going to play it all together as a band and you can remain seated and sing as we play it all together. Then on the morning of the third the sun began to rise up from the grave victorious hallelujah he's alive it's a wee bit high let's all sing that then on the morning of the third, the sun began to rise. 
For God so loved the world, all of us, you and me. He loved us so much he sent his only son, Jesus. The firstborn of creation, sent to take our place, to bear our burden, to suffer our consequence. We were far from God, but God didn't want to be far from us. Jesus came to bring us home. As a prodigal returns to their father, so too could we return to our Creator. A simple plan with just one requirement. Belief. For whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have life. Life eternal. At the very heart of God is love. Indescribable, unrelenting, unstoppable love. That love shines a light guiding us home for God so loved the world. Let's all stand.
formal welcome. Um, my name is Jeff. I'm part of the worship team here in First Ballymena. Um, as you can see behind you, we are very blessed with a fantastic group of, of uh, people that join together here each Sunday. We have a few new members here, a few of these young girls, and we have Liam. No, she doesn't want me to mention her name, but it's just fantastic to have a new kind of group of people willing to come up here, uh, and it's just brilliant. A really warm welcome to anybody visiting tonight. I see a lot of faces that I don't know, and it's just lovely to see you here. Um, and we're just really blessed that you've come to gather with us. Um, we want this to be a really special night, uh, and, and it's already been that. Even from out in the hub, we can hear the hustle and the bustle, and it's great. A number of months back, I was chatting with a good friend. Um, it was actually here in this place. I'll not embarrass this person by, by mentioning any names. But we were discussing a few personal things, and we were discussing, um, I suppose, the craziness of the world and, and all those sorts of things. And this guy gave me a really simple piece of advice, uh, an advice that, that really inspired me. And it's really simple. And he said, Jeff, sometimes we just need to stop. And that touched me that day. Um, and that those simple words have really spoke to me ever since they were given to me. And that's what's kind of inspired tonight. 
Um, as we kind of embark upon the most important time of year in the Christian calendar, um, I want us tonight to take some time out to stop, to stop individually and stop and think us and refocus where we're at. We want to focus our thoughts on the cross. And tonight I want us all to really focus our hearts and bring everything that we have that is weighing us down and holding us back. We want to thank Jesus for all he has done and continues to do for us each and every day. We want to say sorry tonight to him for how we let him down continually. We want to have that um, space here that we can do that. And as we've already done, we want to <laughs> praise him as a church family and as a collective group of, of people and friends here that's come tonight. And one wee thing that was on my heart today, just before um, I came in tonight, can I just ask tonight, each and every one of us, be ourselves. I think we come into church sometimes and there's an awful lot of, um, well, church is church and, and you're, you're always trying to put on the big brave face and all, but tonight, let's be ourselves. Because we were all created uniquely by God and his image. We are who we are because of him and because of his, to quote, precious love. And just a few words from scripture. Psalm 139 says this, For you were created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And then this one, search me, tw verse 23, search me, God, know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. Just before we move on, perhaps tonight you're here and you're searching. Perhaps there's a lot going on in your life. Can I just say, let yourself be found. Let yourself be found tonight. Let Christ's love just flow over you in this place. Tonight's service will go unannounced. There will be, hopefully, some instructions on the screen. Um, Darren has put a few things together to kind of let... There's only two pieces now where it'll be band only, but that'll be on the screen. Everything else will be congregation um, standing together. This is a space tonight. You can sing, you can shout, you can even clap. There's bits of it you can even clap in, um, <laughs> which it would be fantastic. Um, you can even cry if you need to tonight. This is just a space we want to create. There will be tea and coffee afterwards, um, so please don't be rushing away. Um, let's just continue the evening into that. I just want to say before we go any further, a massive thank you to everybody that's been involved in this so far. Um, it's been a real privilege, all these guys and everybody that's been involved, and I just hope that you have a blessed night. And I'm going to have John and Aaron and Amy now to come up and lead us all in prayer. Thanks, Jeff. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can meet together tonight to worship you. As we meet here, help us to focus upon you and remove distractions from our mind. Take away our worries and thoughts of school or work and our to-do lists for the next few days. Remove distractions from this service so that we are thinking only about you, Lord, rather than those around us. Focus our minds on the events of that first Easter. Help us to place ourselves into the story. And imagine what it must have been like for those present. Help us to visualize the events of Palm Sunday as people worshipped your son as he entered Jerusalem, throwing down branches and ropes to create a carpet for him. And then help us to realize afresh that these same people shouted at Crucify only a few short days later, asking for a criminal to, criminal to be released and the creator killed. Take our minds to the cross on Good Friday and the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Remembering that in all of this, you were in control. Your sacrifice changed everything. 
Death was defeated and we gained the chance to be called your family and have eternal life. Heavenly Father, so often we try to do things on our own strength and we don't trust you to be in control of our lives. Help us tonight to change this, to look solely to you, to take our worries and troubles and leave them at your feet, knowing that you are the only one who can deal with them. Thank you, Lord, for dying for us. Thank you for rising again and defeating death. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you left your Holy Spirit with us and in us. And we can truly worship you and call you Father tonight here. Amen. Romans 6, verses 6 to 11. Could it be any clearer? Did our way of life, sorry, our, our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ. A decisive end to that sin, miserable life, no longer captive to sin's demands. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin, conquering death, <clears throat> we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. I 
Say 
Good evening. Um, uh, a few number of number of weeks ago, um, my, the Diamond Primary School, where we're doing a fundraiser, it was uh, cash for clobber. Uh, and so my wife, principal of the Diamond, and my daughter's in P1, and so as a, a dutiful husband and devoted father, uh, I thought I need to get on, on board with this. Uh, and so decided what they were doing was we had to, to give, in, give in clothes that you no longer needed or were wearing anymore, and you, you donated these clothes, and then depending on the weight of them, they, they got certain uh, amount of money, money raised for the school. Uh, and I don't know whether you've had a, or you, you regularly do wardrobe clear outs or things like that, but the, the sort of the idea of it is, is quite good, and you sort of think that this will be good, get, get rid of all this stuff that I no longer need, and I'll have all this free space in my, in my cupboards and my drawers now after that there. But then whenever it comes down to it and you, you go through these, these items of clothing that you've, you've worn and you've created many memories in, it, it's hard at times to, to let go of them. And so you kind of uh, are stuck, you know, thinking, oh, well, give that away. Oh, I don't know. And so you end up with these piles and things jump between the, the different piles. And it's almost, you, you always sort of nearly in your head, you're imagining the worst case scenario. And it's like, how many old pairs of tracks at bottoms do you need to have, you know, what happens if something happens and I use up one of my first old pair of tracks at bottoms? And then what if I have to paint? If you can't, but you can't go painting in your good jeans. So you need to have an old pair of tracks at bottoms to wear for, for painting. And so you end up sort of going to, to save all these, these different tracks at bottoms that you, you don't really need. And I was thinking about it, I was like, it's probably 25 plus years since I've done any painting. And so I think chances are, probably in the next 25 years, I'm unlikely to do any painting. I can get rid of these things. But sometimes when it comes to it, it's hard to, it's hard to, to let go. Uh, and I don't know whether you're, you're a bit of a, a hoarder. It's not just with, with clothes, with, with other things uh, in your house. If you're someone that likes to just keep things just for the, for the rainy day or just in case at some stage uh, I might need that, uh, that I don't want get, to get rid of it. Uh, but tonight I want us, us to think a wee bit more about, uh, about spiritual hoarders or about spiritual hoarding because I think sometimes in our in our lives and uh, and as Christians sometimes we can we can struggle to to let go of things as well things from our from our past I think this this image on the screen sometimes this is this is how we we live our lives where we we hold on to these things from our past maybe it's it's past mistakes that we've made or or past regrets or or, or past hurts Things that have been, been forgiven by Jesus, things that have been dealt with, things like shame or, or guilt that Jesus took upon himself on the cross so that we would be free from them. But even though we know and we've asked for forgiveness, still we don't truly accept it because we still carry them around as a burden and we're unable to, to let go of them. And whenever we do this, whenever we, we carry around these, these burdens, either from our, from our past and past memories, or, or sometimes the burdens can be about the future, and sometimes it's, it's worries and anxieties that we have over well, what's ahead and what's going to happen, and we, we, we're not fully prepared to, to entrust or to, to let go of our, our future ambitions and plans and, and to entrust our lives into the care of Jesus, no one looking at the cross and seeing what he's done for us already and saying, well, if he's done that much for us, then we can trust him with our futures. But it's still, we, we struggle to hold on and uh, we let go. We struggle to let go and we hold on. But whenever we live our lives this way, this way and whenever we carry these burdens and we don't fully let go, then it stops us from, from knowing the fullness of, of the joy and the love and the life that Jesus has for us. See, we were never intended, Jesus never intended for, for you and for me to carry around these burdens, to carry around shame, guilt, whatever it is from our past. He came to set us free. It's what he did on the cross. And so tonight, for each of us, there's this invitation from Jesus. Where Jesus would say to, to let go whatever it is that you've been, been holding on to. Jesus today says, come and know true freedom. Come and know the fullness of my joy. Come and know and experience the fullness of my love. And you only get that as you let go. 
the band are going to come and they're going to sing a, a song for us. And while they do it, some of the, the connected group, are, they're going to come up to the front and almost in a visual drama, they're going to come up and visually, they're going to let go and set down some of the things that, that maybe some of us are, are holding on to tonight. And after that, I'm going to come and lead us in prayer. I know who you are, the cross of salvation was only the star, now I am chosen, free and forgiven, I have a future, and it's worth the living cause I was made to be tending a grave I was called by name born and raised back to life again I was made for more so why would I make a bed in my shame when Run in my way, I know I am yours. I was made for more. I know who I am. I know who you are. The cross of salvation was Why would I make a bed 
why would I make a bed in my shame when I found to no friends? It's running my way, I know I am yours, and I was made for more. You were made, you were made for more, uh, and there's more of, of God's God's goodness for us to experience. And so I want to uh, lead you in prayer now. I want to use uh, the words that, that Jeff uh, used to, to start our service from Psalm 139. And uh, where it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So I'll allow you a moment just in the silence just to allow God to just maybe pinpoint just something that uh, you need to let go of tonight. Something you've been holding on to. Heavenly Father, tonight you know each of us. Our lives are an, an open book to you. And Lord, I thank you that you that you love each of us, Lord. Lord, our past doesn't disqualify us from from coming to you, but Lord, where our where our sin and our failures and our guilt and our shame where where that runs deep. Lord, tonight your, your mercy is more, your mercy is greater. There's forgiveness, there's freedom. Jesus came to break the power of sin in our lives. To call us holy and blameless. Chosen, adopted into the family of God. Heavenly Father, tonight would you give us the grace to, to let go of the things, Lord, that, that you don't intend for us to carry anymore. Help us to let go of the things that have been nailed to the cross, that have been crucified with Christ, that are dead now. And may we truly know what it is to be alive to Christ to walk in the fullness of his love and his joy and his friendship. Continue with us this evening, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of the faith. For the joy set out for him, he endures the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 to 15. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them was raised again. Just before we sing this next song, I just feel on my heart that I want to give a real word of thanks to John and Leo and Andrew and Katie and all those that, that do connect it on a, a Saturday night because the way things worked out, it kind of fell on the night that the connect it was due to be on. But 
as we're all sitting at home every other Saturday night with our feet up, stuffing our faces with Chinese or whatever we do, these people uh, are here from half eight to half nine when the whole town is still and quiet and these young people are studying the word of God and you can hear the youth club ticking away outside under Derek's bat in there tonight. Uh, he said he might bring some of them in. It would be great if he did. But uh, it's just massive thanks to you all. Let's stand. Let's stand.
Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. It's good to see you all. Uh, thank you, Matthew, for, for reminding us when we're looking back with things to let go of. And I'm going to now finish, carry on and say, looking forward, there's things we have to take hold of. And that's really important. I'm going to take you to, uh, if, you, if you travel, you fly a bit and, and you go to an airport and the, there's a bus comes. And you oh dear, the bus is going to come. I'm going to take you either back to the, the terminal or from the terminal to the airplane. And you're packed in, aren't you? You're packed in. And, and this is where I really start to panic. Because if it's too warm, oh, how long are we going to be in this? And then it jerks forward and you grab something to hold on to, don't you? And you're going about, oh, this is awful. Well, look. We have things to hold on to in our, in our Christian faith. We have things to give, give up. And this reading that, that Sam brought to us from Hebrews was reminding us we have things to get rid of because they hinder us. They'll slow us down. They'll trip us up. They'll distract us. But the other side of this is that there's things we have to hold on to and we have to hold on tightly to fantastic. Look at this. We're going to see this now straight away. There's lots of let us, let us. With four lets us tonight, Matthew's covered the first one. Here's another one from Hebrews chapter 10. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Now, we have a great hope in our hearts tonight. We've been singing about it, but sometimes that hope moves from being the forefront of our minds to somewhere back here and something else hopelessness comes in front of it and I'm going to be encouraging us tonight not just tonight but tomorrow and then through Easter and for the rest of our days to hold on tight to something hold on tight hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus and this little passage we have let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and then here it comes let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. 
if some of us have been trying to do these park runs, and as, as that one today, here's the, here's the route that's laid out for the Ecos park run. You'll maybe recognize where it is. We're asked to run the race that is set before us. That means very clearly it's not a race that we set for ourselves. This is a course you follow when you go. If you want to run that race, that's a course you're going to follow. And we're following Jesus. He lays out a path for us to walk through. And he has chosen this for us. We want to hold on to the hope that we have as we go about this, this race that he's given to us. We hold firmly to him. He goes ahead of us and leads us forward. He says we have to run the race with perseverance or endurance. Now, what does that suggest to you? That suggests that it's going to be difficult at times. And anybody that does any running, you know it's going to be difficult. If you're running the park run this morning, you, you had mucky areas. You could slide. You had wet areas. You got your feet wet. There was a bit of an incline. You thought it was going, getting too long. Can I, can I get through this? Run with perseverance or endurance. This is difficult. And the Christian life is difficult at times, isn't it? Other times, not so, and if everything seems to be going well. But many of us, I'm sure, tonight, you're going through the, the muddy patches, the concern times, the pain, the suffering, the worried about people, worried about yourself, all sorts of things. Jesus said, run the race that I've chosen for you with endurance, with perseverance, keep going. And we don't do this to earn Christ's favor, but because he has secured our favor through this work on the cross, we're in this special relationship with him, and he promises that he'll never leave us nor forsake us on this, this race that we're running with him. One of the lovely things when you're running with other people is if you see someone just in front of you, you can follow them. <laughs> And it's great if you're running a race for the first time or whatever, you can follow them around in a park run situation where you're running in a, in a, maybe a forest for the first time. You can't see the signs, but you're following this person. And Jesus would be saying to us today, I'm going ahead of you. Hold on tight to the vision that you have of me. See me not too far ahead of you. <laughs> Don't lose sight of me. Follow me where I lead you. So this is the next fix. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, or the founder and the one who completes everything for us. We read earlier from Romans from the message, and this is another little uh, quote from the message. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finish the race that we are in. He's ahead of us. He's won glory for us. He's won forgiveness for us. He's done it all. The Bible tells us, whom the sun sets free, they are free indeed. Free to finish the course because Jesus is with them. And he ensures us, assures us today that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Consider what he went through. There's a, a hymn that I was brought up with for many a year. My granny used to sing it. As, there is a green hill far away. Here's a couple of verses for us. We may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us. He died. He hung and suffered there. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven, saved by his precious blood. The race that was set out for Jesus, the course that he had to go through, we're in it now with him, aren't we, as we, we go through these last weeks of his, of his life before he goes to the cross. We're entering into what people call Holy Week next week. We're starting off a Palm Sunday tomorrow. We're following how he was determined to finish the course. 
he endured it all for you and for me tonight. So as we find the going tough, we're holding on to the hope, the hope of our faith in Jesus. We're invited here in this passage to look to him, who for the joy that was set before him, endured, persevered, kept going, finished the course, endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We are so thankful tonight in the songs we're singing because they're all true. And I know that uh, there's some people that even taking part in the service today, this is their first full year as becoming a follower of Jesus. We have people in, in the building tonight who are in the first number of months in following Jesus. But this is all made possible because Jesus finished the course and he bled and died on the cross. He was put in a tomb and he was raised on the third day. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. I love that. Just as he said he would. And he died, why? He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. And this is possible tonight because he frees us from the sin that entangles, which would make it impossible for a relationship with God. He forgives us of this. He frees us and say, you can live for me. I will be with you and in you. And together we will finish the course that I've set out before you through the ups and downs, the climbs, the descents, the muddy bits, the wet bits, the painful bits. There's a course we're on and Jesus is going to lead us home. It seems a big ask, doesn't it? I'm going to a play part now in my mind and have a little uh, picture here. Do you ever see these rings? Uh, maybe some of you still do this. But you jump up and you hang tough and you go right across very, very quickly. That's great, isn't it? I'm not sure I could do that, but I'd have to try when no one's looking. I wouldn't like to try, you know. Yes, I'd hang tough, get right across. Seems a big ass, doesn't it? I'm not sure I could do that. Going back to the bus and holding on, something to hold on to, this hope that we have in Jesus, this course that he set out before us. We're going to finish it with him, and we are because he, he is full of grace and mercy, and he's going to be with us and going to provide all that we need. He won it for us on the cross. But here's what I'm saying to us tonight. Looking forward, holding on. Sometimes we forget this. I'm not sure I could go down all of those rings nowadays, if I, if I ever could. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing we're holding on to the hope in Jesus aren't we of course but look at this image imagine a strong hand holding on to us gripping us tightly that we can't slip so that he who says he's keeping us for the heavenly kingdom. He's keeping us, he's protecting us, he's holding us for that. We're in the grip of his grace tonight. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And that is our hope tonight, all flowing from the cross. We're in the grip of his grace. Yes, hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are being shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last day. Holding on to the hope why we know the one who we hope in is holding on to us. So we get on that track, that race that's been set before us with confidence, knowing we are getting to the end and our prize awaits because Jesus died for us and was rose, risen again. He's gone to the right hand of the Father and one day will come for us to be with him forever.
just going to pause and just think about that for a moment before the band will start playing. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pause. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful hope that you've given to us, something that we can hold on to. Father, may nothing get in the way of this hope. May nothing try to replace this hope. May we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who holds us today. Father, when we thought that we were slipping, in those times that come our way when we find that going very difficult, we think of Jesus on the cross, how he endured. He finished the work that you gave him to do and was raised for us. Help us to think about these things. Why Jesus? Why all the talk of crucifixions and the resurrection of the dead? The idea that our present reality can be radically transformed by one historical day from antiquity. Why does this one event persist to shake nations, stands against kingdoms, relentlessly remaining there in every test in time? Why does the life of one rabbi bring hope to the billions and peace beyond understanding, peace even in facing death? His axioms transcend culture, moving between and among every generation, offering new grace with each day to the poor and to the rich, to the young and to the old, each who calls his name. 
This is not just a page between the chapters of history, neither myth, metaphor, nor a line of spectacular exaggeration. His influence on every human life story is unfit to be placed into any existing category. No, Jesus isn't written into our story. Rather, our story is written into his. Every authority, even the grave, obeys his sovereign will. This is why we exalt the mighty name of Jesus over and over and over again. His victory has given us life. His mercies stand at the center of our faith. He alone holds the pen of history. He is the one true God, and at that, a God who died for us. Why rejoice? Why is this our anthem? The answer for why Jesus comes down to this. Jesus is at the center. His victory over the grave is written into every line between old and new, between death and life, there stands one historical reality, the resurrection of Jesus.
before we sing our last song together tonight. If there's been anything here tonight that has touched you, if you're struggling with anything or, or you need to share anything with anyone, there are plenty of people in this place. Don't be leaving tonight. If you haven't found yourself and you feel you want to find yourself, don't be leaving. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone that's been involved. It's been a real blessing. Let's sing this last song. <laughs>
Peter, I want to thank everyone who's involved in making tonight possible. Thank you, Jeff, and your team of musicians, singers, uh, for Connected, for the readers, for our, our IT and audiovisual team. Thank you, everyone, and those who have been making the refreshments, refreshments before and after in First Palomino. So with refreshments here, if you're not rushing away, please uh, take a moment or two. But we hope we've all left or leaving with a sense of the wonder of it all, that Jesus gave his life for us and was raised to life on our behalf. That we would give up a lot of things, but we would receive much more in his kingdom. Let's pray together as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together this evening. Would you go with us? Would you bring to mind those things you were speaking to us about? And may you give us hearts and minds to be able to change. And Father, we are asking that this Easter time would be very special for each and every one of us when we come to understand more and more about you. And so we ask that grace, mercy, and peace of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would rest and abide with each and every one of us tonight and always. And we said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone.